What's up, everybody? We are back. John Delarose here. I'm a number one best-selling author and comic creator, and I am coming at you today with a review of Daredevil by Brian Michael Bendis, Volume 2, Omnibus. We read Volume 1 and reviewed that on the channel a couple weeks ago. You can go look for that video. And this concludes his run on this, as well as uh, Maliv's uh, run on the uh, on the on the art here so uh this is the omnibus it's actually a pretty small omnibus made for a pretty quick read comparative to a lot of other ones and uh it's got some cool art on the inside also that uh, that's different than the exterior dust jacket cover i kind of like that marvel does that it looks pretty cool oops this is backwards i put it i put it backwards in my dust jacket that's all right so this covers Daredevil 61 to 81, What If Karen Page Had Lived and Ultimate Marvel Team Up uh, 6 through 8. So this is volume 2. Daredevil actually reset its numbering uh, in the early 2000s. And then they have a couple extra stories in there uh, that have Daredevil in it, like the What If and Ultimate Marvel, uh, I guess to pad out the page numbers uh, so they could get their omnibus. I didn't have it backwards, actually. I had it right. No, I didn't. Okay. Well, there we go. All right. So Daredevil actually has set himself up as the kingpin of crime in this, and uh, or he's not the kingpin of crime, just the kingpin, and he's uh, he's uh, being uh, edgy and and defeating all the evil and telling everybody to get the heck out of Hell's Kitchen. Now this is uh, Maliev's art, and it's a very it's one of those like photo realistic styles, so it it works sometimes, and it kind of is a little boring on sometimes, but this is what Bendis does. Uh, you can see, look at this like walls of dialogue uh, over the uh, and it's just. Murdoch standing there. I mean, this is not a very interesting page to look at whatsoever. Um, he does this so much that it's kind of painful. But the best part about Bendis, uh, and the worst part about Bendis, is you can actually skip almost all of this dialogue and just kind of skim over it, and you still know what's happening in the story because this is almost entirely useless dialogue at that. Uh, it's both frustrating and it's nice that you can skip over it. <laughs> um, but uh, Daredevil starts on the run here, uh, and there's this whole situation with Black Widow, who's also on the run here. Uh, and she's being hunted down by uh, some uh, agents uh, who are trying to bring her to Bulgaria because she um, she interrupted some, some deal by extracting Hydra, and they're trying to stop an international incident. But there's also uh, some strange... Uh, I, I like some of the art too. That's pretty neat. Um, there's also some snipers coming after him and trying to kill them and all that. And uh, and Daredevil's caught up in the middle of this. So, uh, fun stuff. Uh, nice nice plot line. I gotta say, Bendis' premises are all right. Uh, his execution just ends up making for a slow and drawn out right to trade kind of thing. And uh, eventually they're coming after Daredevil to kill Daredevil and Black Widow does her thing to stop them now it is building up into an interesting different storyline here uh which we're going to get to in a little bit and she leaves with a little bit of a uh shield sort of setup here and you see this this whole deal with giving some background uh this is a, a filler issue of heroes reacting to daredevil becoming the kingpin and all that which we kind of got a little bit of last issue also it's kind of weird um but we get to to have that again here and i think uh Malib might have needed some time on the art so they they put in a filler issue real quick we get into another storyline here which is again an interesting premise and an interesting like sort of arty way it's done there's this old timer mob boss who blames daredevil for for ruining his life and you actually go back to like when he was a young guy uh, and that's done in black and white, so you can, like, get the old school time. And then you get this, like, early Daredevil. You see him when he's in his yellow costume. And they do this coloring sort of thing that looks all pixelated to make it look like uh, it's in the past also. And this is where Daredevil took him down originally. And then he comes back into modern times, and he's going to try to kill Daredevil. It's a pretty neat storyline overall. Again, it's just a little too drawn out. The Gladiator is a part of this who's being blackmailed by this bad guy. I do like the artistic style choices and the, the different eras. I think that makes makes for a pretty neat look uh, for the book. But uh, this should have been done in like a, like one or two issues, not six or however many issues it ended up being. This, uh, this ends up the problem with Daredevil throughout the whole thing. 
uh, in this. Now, there's a, a running plot thread where there's this FBI agent uh, who's chasing down Daredevil. Now, she ends up being the cousin of the White Tiger, and she's inherited the White Tiger's amulet, who died uh, in Volume 1. So she's about to become the new White Tiger. Uh, the beginning of replacement heroes, where the women replace the men, and minorities replace the women, and uh, this is <laughs> this is how Marvel started with it. They tested it out with characters like the, the White Tiger, and... Nobody really cared about that, so then they kept doing it further with characters like Spider-Man and Iron Man, etc. Daredevil starts to train her in the middle of this, um, and she really doesn't want to bring him in uh, to the FBI, who's after Matt Murdock, trying to prove that he's actually Daredevil through the course of this. And for some reason, he uh, he actually goes for uh, and uh, and and does it anyway. And the bad guy ends up uh, getting getting uh, knocked out there. So this is an interesting storyline next. So he did that Artie storyline. Now he does another Artie storyline. And this is kind of the problem with Bendis is like he gets lost in his own like concepts, which are cool concepts. But like you really do need to have like a superhero, uh, you know, knock down, drag out fight uh, at some point that like kind of kind of like resets things and like cleanses your palate. So you don't have so you don't get from Artie to Artie to Artie. Now, he actually does like this Decalogue thing where it's going to be uh, uh, a play on the Ten Commandments. And, you know, thou shalt not have no other god before me. And uh, there's this Daredevil support group. And they sit there talking about stories of how Daredevil influenced their lives. And um, it starts to build into a storyline where there's this like weird demon creature controlling people's actions and screwing with people. Um, and Daredevil uh, is a part of that, of course. Uh, and so they all just are wondering why Daredevil does what he does. Uh, there's a bunch of different uh, deals in here. Part two, uh, thou shall not lie. This is part three. Uh, and he goes through the Ten Commandments, and then he uh, he realizes uh, he doesn't want to do all of them, I guess, and only does five of the Ten Commandments <laughs> before stopping the storyline. It's kind of it's kind of like a, a half baked, uh, non finished concept, but the storyline kind of finishes up. He finishes up where Matt Murdock actually is part of this and watches this whole uh, support group go through. And then uh, he chases down and, and hunts down that demon bad guy and, uh, and and knocks him off. And that's the end of that. So then we get in kind of the end. There's going to start to wrap up the Daredevil storyline. Wilson Fisk uh, is alive, who was in theory dead before. He goes to uh, Phil Urich and says, hey, I've got a story for you. Uh, I've got I've got these uh, Matt Murdock papers who, uh, and it proves Matt Murdock is Daredevil, and he's going to go to the FBI and he wants a full pardon in exchange for uh, proving this. And the FBI guy is all too eager to take this because he wants the credit and he wants to be a celebrity. Um, he fires the gal who is the White Tiger, uh, who then tries to help Matt Murdock. Black Widow comes to help Matt Murdock, and uh, Matt Murdock in volume one got married to this blind girl who then comes back during this. So she disappeared at the end of it. And she really wasn't a part of this volume very much, but then she just comes back and we're, we just like accept her relationship there for a little bit. Electra comes to help as well. And, uh, you know, all we get that whole gambit of, uh, of Matt Murdoch people. You get, you get the whole Bendis dialogue throughout all this too. Um, so eventually they go to the newspaper, say that uh, Matt Murdock is going to be exposed. And so Matt Murdock goes out as Daredevil and starts fighting people. And uh, he in eventually exposes himself because uh, everybody's kind of trying to chase him down over the course of this. Now he gets beat up pretty bad and ends up going to the night nurse. And the FBI breaks in to try to, to arrest him. Electra uses her group, The Hand, which is a ninja group, to try to help him out and uh, eventually he gets caught and uh, he goes on trial at the end of the Bendis issue here and it ends up with with Matt Murdock going to jail and then Ed Brubaker is going to pick up the storyline from there at that point uh, and he's actually in jail with Wilson Fisk uh, so that's an interesting interesting spot you get a little letter of like I'm leaving the book and that is the entirety of Bendis's run it's all right um, I like the art for the most part, that realism's okay. It works in some areas, it's slow in other areas, but a lot of it's due to Bendis' scripting, I think, more than uh, the art itself from that. We get a what if Karen Page had lived. Now, a lot of this was Karen Page was killed uh, in, uh, I believe it was Kevin Smith's run, uh, and that 
made Matt Murdock into like this brooding, angry person. You know, this is what they do. They they make these char these heroes into just angry people who think they like can't have good lives. And um, this what if like it, it really retells the story for about the first like half of the book and then quickly summarizes, oh, Daredevil killed the kingpin and then, you know, he went to jail. Uh, and that was that was it. Uh, so there wasn't really much to it. And, uh, you know, they didn't really need to do that issue. This is a, a Marvel team up Spider-Man Punisher and Daredevil. And it goes over the origin of the Punisher in the ultimate Marvel universe and kind of redoes his origin in a decompressed manner. You know, the Punisher gets his family killed, goes after the people who killed him. And, uh, and Daredevil is kind of caught up in that a little bit. There's like, he's only in a few pages through this and they fight each other is what it comes down to. Um, and I don't know, it wasn't that interesting of a storyline, eminently forgettable. <laughs> so lots of, uh, lots of, uh, filler at the end there. You get some pages of like alternate art and, uh, some of the script pages at the back of the book, uh, for that, if you like that, you know, it's all right. The concepts were pretty good. The art's pretty good. Uh, the Bendis dialogue slows it down. The execution again, like sometimes Bendis just doesn't quite, uh, finish up what he's doing and it's just like it's kind of maddening um so you know it's all right uh this is about a 7.5 out of 10 it's, uh, it's better daredevil than a lot of the stuff towards the end of the 90s uh so a lot of people were happy with this just because it you know was more interesting than a lot of that stuff uh but i think uh you know there's a couple runs right after this ed brubaker and mark wade uh, who do a little bit better of a job and uh you know it's nice that you can go through all these omnibuses and uh and just plow right through the entire story of daredevil like that uh but uh the execution on bendis's end is uh is a little too bendis for me all right hit that like and subscribe button we'll be back soon